Hello, this is Robert Messina, and I've got a new topic for you guys, which is a reward for the uh, Church of um, Thyatira. Thyatira means odor of affliction. So we go through different things, and that church was named after the city, which which name was Odor of Affliction. The amazing part of the, the reward that they get is that he says, I will give to him that overcomes the morning star. Okay? Now, rewards are given those that are worthy of everlasting life during the time that Jesus is amongst us. We live with him, he lives with us. It is when, it is basically the marriage supper of the lamb we, where um, believers are the bride and Jesus is the bridegroom and we are enjoying one another uh, in in love in the love of God in the light of God in the in the splendor and the glory of God, which we don't have now. We see through a dark a glass darkly now, but when we see when He comes, we will see Him face to face, and there'll be a pleasant communication between His light and our and our light. Because we had we have his light now. His light is the light the life of men. So we have his life now. There uh, if we do not believe in him, we haven't opened up our heart to him, we don't walk with him in spirit and in truth, we are in darkness and we have no light. We have no, we have not his light, but we have darkness, so we have no life. So there are men walking around that have no life. And that's hard to understand, but it's, it's the truth. And I went over it um, with my last video that uh, uh, showed that, there's, that there are many basic words that have two meanings, one in the regular world that we live in and the other one in the regular kingdom of heaven world where we live in. So in the regular world that we live in, light is light. As we all know, it's a physical thing. It has photons. It comes from atoms and, and electrons. Pops, you know, it has that, it has that nature. That's the way it was created. And it was created because before it was created, there was light. But it was the light of the holy God who has a fa the Father. He has that light. The Son, he has that light. And the, and the Holy Spirit, he has that light. That light that they have are their are a light almost the same thing as their life. So anyway, what struck me about I will give him the morning star, what struck me about that, that he's going to give us the morning star, is that he is going to be our light when we live with him in the millennium times. It is, it is absolutely described that there's going to be uh, no, night, no night there for us. And the, the, uh, the, the person that's cast out into the outer darkness is for anybody that's living outside of where we live. Because we live 
we are going to be living without the sun, the moon, and the stars. There's not going to be any light. Okay? Uh, so, it strikes me that he's going to give us the morning star. And the idea of a morning star is um, the breaking of the day. The, the, the star they're talking about is, I, I think, is... Uh, I know, I know Venus, and I know uh, Sirius. Both of those stars, that uh, one's a planet, one is a star. In the morning time, when the stars are going to start fading, and the sun comes out, and that's the whole. That's what I'm getting at. The, 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 the morning star is, to me, it more reflects the sun than it does Venus or or Sirius, the star. Sirius is, is a major star in the great, the great uh, wolf. There's a, greater, there's a greater wolf and a lesser wolf. And Sirius is the, he's the great star in the great wolf constellation. Okay, because it's my understanding that the morning star that's mentioned is the sun coming up over the mountain and breaking forth and darkness has gone, no more darkness. He, he has come, he is rising, he is there. We all are familiar with him coming. When, when, when we see him in the millennium, he is going to be our light that's coming from the darkness. Because we, we are in darkness now. And it's hard to understand, but right now, I consider right now we're still in darkness. And I consider when Jesus comes back, and we see him with all his glory. And uh, that glory is going to, the, is our life. And our life is going to invigorate. And we're going to see him. And the, he'll be coming round the mountain when he comes. The dawn comes around the mountain when he comes. When it goes from being in the darkness in the night to being in the day, that moment, that morning star moment, that breaking forth of the light moment is, to me, the gift that he's giving, which is essentially everlasting life. Now, if you notice that uh, the rewards that are given to all of the seven churches, to those that overcome, those that hear what he's saying, those that uh, change in their way, and those that uh, what they have they hold on to, they are all given a reward, and the, the reward translates Every single one of them translates into everlasting life. They are given life, no more death, and they will live and reign with him all the years of eternity. And we're going to be going from not, uh, time, the way it is now, to time, the way it's always been before there was time. Before the beginning and the end came. Before the Alpha and the Omega created everything from the beginning until the end. All of that was creation that after it, he lived before he created. He created, he was the beginning. The first day, 
it was the beginning, he was there. Creating. The word was there. Creating. There was not one thing that he created that was not created, created by the word. All right? All of the rewards of overcoming of all seven churches all translate to having everlasting life. So let's let's go to that topic. Let's start reading it. And to, to Ephesus, he says, To him that overcomes, to him that overcomes, I will give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. It's in, paradise means garden uh, in Greek. So it's the garden of God. And, and the garden of God is where we're going to be living with him. It's going to be a garden, a, a gan Eden, garden of Eden, a garden of pleasure. Eden means ple pleasure. Okay, to Smyrna, he that, he that overcomes shall not be hurt of the second death. So remember, there's a first death. We all have the first death, everybody. And there's a second death. And anybody who is not written in the book of life is thrown into the lake of fire, which is the second death. So if, if Smyrna is not getting the second death, they are getting everlasting life. Pergamon? Pergamon means the uh, tall tower. Okay? It means the tall watchtower. To him that overcomes, I will give to eat of the hidden manna. And I will give him a white stone. Now, uh, this, the, the, the these rewards, the way I'm going to highlight Morning Star, I'm going to I'm going to bring out some um, the mysteries of the hidden manna and the white stone. I'll I'll be doing that after, but I want to I fr I first want to talk mostly about the uh, Morning Star, which is given in Thyatira to Thyatira again. It's the uh, odor of affliction city. And he that overcomes and keeps my wor works unto the end, to him will I give the power over the nations, and he shall rule, rule them with a rod of iron. And as vessels of a potter shall, he be, shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. Okay, before I talk about the morning star, I just want to... The, 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 they are also beginning the power to, to rule the nations with iron and break their vessels um, to shivers. All right? So um, what I like about that verse, when I see all the evil that's being done and I, and men think that they are God-like creatures that rule over us and can kick us around and everything, and I'm really annoyed about, I, I really get annoyed with them, I am going to have a rod of iron in my hand and I am going to take, do with them as I want to do. I'm going to I'm going to be part of the judgment even as the the son was given a, a, the ability to judge them like he does like he does judge them in the battle of Armageddon he judges them all they are all brought before they are gathered and they think they're gathering themselves because they're going to win something they gathered themselves because that's they he, because they are put in a place where he can kill them all at once. The battle of Armageddon is a battle for us. It's not for, for uh, against the world. It's for it, it. It is against the world. 
It's not the world being against us. Okay? It's the end of the world. Battle of Armageddon is the last thing. We, the last thing is getting rid of the evil and having vengeance and all of that. That is what the Battle of Armageddon is all about. And I did a whole bunch of videos on it. And that's the reason why it's very clear to me that that's what it is. And so anyway, the reward for uh, Thyatira is that they will get the Morning Star. And that's really the topic of what this video is about. Okay, now Sardi. Now, I'm still talking about how all of the rewards are uh, of the seven churches are translate to everlasting life. To Sardi, he says, He that overcomes, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot his name out of the book of life. See? So, so Sardi is an example. Sardi means red. And it has the, uh, I, I get the feeling that there's a lot of um, uh, mar martyrs in Sardi, in Sardi that, that, that die for the Lord. That's my, that's my guess. Uh, but um, when they, when anybody believes, he's written in the book of life. And it says, I shall not blot, blot his name out of the book of life. So what, what that's telling me is we are written in the book of life. And, but we could, we could not hold on. We could not overcome and we could not endure to the end and we could be taken out. That's given him. He has the license to write you in and he has the license to write you. To blot you out. Okay, so but anyway, if he's if he's not taken out, that means he's in the book of life, that means he lives forever. He has everlasting life. Okay, that's what I'm getting at there. Philadelphia. In him that overcomes will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. And 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 I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which comes down from heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. So how does that all tra translate? First of all, in, if you're in the you're a pillar in the temple of his God in the millennium, you that that is the millennium. Anybody in that millennium, anybody living there, anybody in the temple, anybody in any area in that whole area promised to Abraham, anybody living in the paradise of God is in everlasting life at this time. Okay, so that's how all of the that what he's talking about there is everlasting translates to everlasting life. Now, in their case. He's going to write upon them the name of his of his God, so they're going to have they're going to have the the name of the Father, they're going to have the name of the city of his God, which is New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem is the bride of Christ, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. So we're all getting new names, and he his new name is being written upon us and because the way the way a woman takes the name of the husband it so is the the bride of Christ is taking the name of their husband who is Jesus Yehoshua okay so that's ever to me living forever with him, being married to him forever, forever, being married to the everlasting life guy is, is, is having everlasting life. Okay. Laodicea, to him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I over, 
even as I also overcame and set down my set down with my father in his throne. So Laodicea uh, had a lot of blindness where they thought they were rich and they were poor and um, they needed to overcome. And when they had to overcome, they had to change within themselves and become more like him. And if you do that, you're going to be uh, sitting with him in his throne. Okay, and you're going to overcome like he, like he overcame. All right, so let's go. Uh, okay, I'll, to give you an example of, um, a couple of examples here, of how the morning star is, when he says, I will give him, I will give him the morning star, He's meaning, he means that he's giving the light of men, which is the life of men. And he's talking, and, it, and he, later we're going to see that he calls himself the morning star. He calls himself the morning star. So he's going to be, when he gives us the morning star, he's giving us him. All right? So. And let, let's see how a few verses reflect his light. <laughs> um, Isaiah 60, 19 and 20. The sun shall no more be thy light by day. See, this, neither for brightness shall the moon give thee light. Okay, so right there, the sun's not giving light by the day. And the moon isn't giving light either because there is no night there. They're, they're, uh, and the sun isn't giving us light. So who is the light of the the light of the world? That is the life of men is giving us the light in the millennium time. This is, and that's why people that all of us that live where God promised to Abraham, all the way up until the Euphrates. All of that, that vast, there's going to be million, millions of us. Don't worry. We'll, we'll all have enough room. We're not going to be crowded, but it's, we're going to be glorious. We're going to be happy. We're going to be content. Okay. Okay. So the moon shall not give light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light. And thy God, thy glory. So we're going to have everlasting light and we're going to have glory. And our God is going to be our glory. The sun shall no more go down. Neither shall the moon withdraw, withdraw themselves. Because the Lord shall be thine everlasting light. And the days of thy morning Morning and the days of thy mourning, and then that's not the morning, that's being sorrowful, that's a sorrowful morning. The days of thy of thy sorrow shall be ended. No more no more crying there. No more dying there. It's nice, love. It's, it's the love of God that we are inheriting. This this walk that we have, the sufferings that we have. The, the endurance, that the trials that we have are all going to be worth that we have to overcome. That's, and But we're going to get all of the glory and, that, and love that God has for us. So it's, 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 and it's almost here. Okay. Now, this is reflected in, in uh, Revelation as well. Uh, uh, let's go to Revelation 7. 14 and 17. 14 through 17. These are they which came out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So they came out of the great tribulation. After the great tribulation is the millennium. All right? And we're, they, uh, they're getting new white washed robes. And they're white in the blood of the Lamb. 
because he gave us the righteous, our righteousness. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sits on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither shall they th neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them. See? No more, no more sun. There's no more sun. Nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water and shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Zechariah says it in four, uh, chapter 14, 6 and 7. It shall come to pass in that day. Now he's talking about, when he says in that day, that's the day that the, the day of the Lord, that's the day of the Lord where he's amongst us. And that light, the light of the day of the Lord, that light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall be one day. It's, it's one day. How could it be? How could a, a thousand years be one day? Because the, cause the, the day of the Lord is the, is the millennium, a thousand years. But it shall be one day. Guess what? There's no time. There, we're in everlasting life. Well, everlasting and time are totally different things. He's the he's the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. He was in everlasting life before he was the beginning. Before the beginning, he was. And then the beginning came, and he makes light, and he makes time. Time has light has to have time. It has a speed. It it, it travels at so much distance. Per second, it needs the second to have to have to in order for light to, to exist. It needs a second. It needs time. It travels in time. It has time. So right when he said, as soon as he said, "Let there be light," and there is light, there is also time. So, but but before that, before that, before the beginning. He always existed. There was no time, but there was everlasting life, which was as one day. Okay, and that that one day shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass at evening time, it shall be light. Okay? <laughs> it's, it's always going to be light. It's always, I mean, I mean, it's it's that's whatever it is, we're gonna like it. So, you know, if you like the stars right now, that's that's okay. You know, but you're gonna you you're not gonna feel like you want the stars. You're gonna be happy, 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 happy. It's gonna be no end to your happiness. Uh, let's go to Song of Songs now. There's a, a verse that they say twice, and they have different second verses, but they say the same thing twice. Song, Song of Songs, chapter 4, verse 6. Until the day break and the shadows flee away, I will get to me, the, I will get me to the mountain of myrrh and to the hill of frankincense. Frankincense. So, until the break of day means that they're still in the nighttime. So, right now it's as if they're still in the, this world, and they're waiting for the break of day, like we wait for Jesus to come back, and we have we have the uh, all the greatness we're going to be getting. So, until that happens, they're go going to the mountain of myrrh. And to the hill of frankincense, so they're going to have the sweet fragrances, and they're going to be 
healing themselves and get and gaining strength and and um with like the way a, a woman uh makes herself with a nice pleasant sense a nice perfumed sense to uh when she meets before she meets her husband okay let's go to the next one until the break of day again now by the way that that word break uh me actually means is used most of the time as opens until the day opens up and the shadows flee away now the the shadows fleeing away most amplified in the very break of the day the very break from night to morning okay that's when the shadows are the longest and they start getting shorter and shorter and shorter and then they start getting longer and longer and longer again so that's the way it's been now but the very beginning of the morning that's when the shadows are the longest and so that's the idea of the shadows fleeing away so in verse 17 until the break of day opens and the shadows flee away turn my beloved see this turn my beloved and be thou like so now again they're waiting to meet the lord it's there this is the bride talking waiting to meet the lord and uh they say turn my beloved and be thou like a row now that word, the word, remember when Adam named the animals? When he saw a row, he, what he called it in the Hebrew tongue, he used words, words, a word that means beautiful, glorious, goodly, and pleasant. That's, in other words, the same exact word for row is used for beautiful glorious goodly and pleasant or a young heart now the the word that's used for heart h-a-r-t the animal like a ram is strong is the it, it's used for the word strong mighty and things like that now um and the, the part that got must have got Adam was the awesome leaps. He must have seen the awesome leaps that the, the ram that or the heart gives us. Upon the mountains of Bethar. Now, Mount Bethar, nobody knows where it is. But the, the, the root word for Bethar has the idea of cuttings, divides, clefts. So a mountain that it has a lot of ruggedness and everything around it uh, is no problem for a young heart leaping around. Big, big divide, he goes right over it. Okay? He's strong. They're strong and they're diligent. A good uh, verse that describes Rose, First Chronicles 12, 8. Of the Gadites, they have separated themselves unto David into the hold of, of to the wilderness, might of men. So Gadites were, were strong warriors. They're one of the tribes, the, the, the tribe of Gad. And they were noted to be um, warriors. Men of war fit for battle that could handle shield and buckler, whose faces were like the faces of lions and were swift as rows upon the mountains. So you see how uh, the idea of a row upon a mountain has, uh, is 
connotated with strength. Okay, so um, back to the morning star. Isaiah 58, 8. Then shall they thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth free, speedily, and thy righteousness shall go, for, go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy rearward, rearward. So in front of them they have the righteousness, the righteousness of God walks before in front of them, and the glory of the Lord uh, walks in back of them. And besides all of that, thy light shall break forth as the morning. The light that we have, which is our life, which is his light, will break forth as the morning. There's the morning star. It's, it's described as breaking forth as the morning breaks forth. Okay, so that's the idea of the morning star. And that's the idea of that it's his light, not the light that we know from the sun. It's his light coming, breaking forth. He is the morning star. Let's go back to uh, Pergamon. And where Pergamon, the reward he gets, because it was the, the giving us the light of giving us the morning star is the same thing as everlasting life, the same thing as being wedded to Jesus. It's a, it's all of that. What they what he gives to Pergamon is also in the same vein of getting everlasting life. So, but the way he describes it here, he says. I will give him to eat of the hidden manna. And I said to myself, what does he mean by the hidden manna? And you know what popped up in my mind? Passover. The traditions of Passover. And one of the traditions of Passover, and I believe that this tradition was was there when uh, 2,000 years ago, it hasn't changed. You know, that this traditions of Passover don't change. I mean, they do change. They shouldn't change. <clears throat> but I think this particular one was a tradition when Jesus had his tradition with his disciples. If you, if you had never heard of the term afikomen in the Passover, what it has to do with is there's a pouch where there's a pouch. Now, you see, I have the three pictures up there. Um, so right now I'm talking to the, on the left-hand side, there's a pouch, and you see three matzahs coming out of the pouch. The tradition is they take the middle one out. They take the middle one out. And they break, they break it in half, and they put the, on the right side, you see them putting a, 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 the half into a, 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 a separate little pouch. And then they take that separate little pouch, and they, uh, they hide it. And the children, the end of the, a Seder, the children get up and they look for the hidden matzah or the hidden manna. Okay? And then when they find it, they get a reward. That reward is, is translated to the reward where the people of Pergamon, are, the, the, the saints of Pergamon, are getting to eat of the hidden manna. That's their reward. They found it. When he says, I, I will give them the hidden manna, because what else does it mean? I have no idea otherwise what he what Jesus is referencing when he says hidden manna. Okay, now you notice that this the uh that that middle matzah which rep okay 
you have the Father, and you have the Son, and you have the Holy Spirit. You have the Trinity, and they are in three persons. And the middle person is Jesus. Okay? And he's the, it's the middle matzah that's taken out. And it's broken. And it's just like in the, in the Passover, uh, when Jesus had his Passover, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. He broke that bread. He broke that matzah and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show the Lord's death until he come. There's another tradition in the, in the Passover that, I, again, I believe that Jesus was using that, that same tradition as well, which is four cups of wine. Okay, and the four, there are four cups of wine, and um, they get the, the, the names of those cups from Exodus 6, verse 6 through 7, 6 and 7. Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out. So I will bring you out is the first cup. From under the burden, I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians and I will rid you out of their bondage. So that second piece there is that he will set us free. Okay? Well, we won't be in slavery anymore. We will be free. Okay, so we have... Uh, this cup of freedom, and then we have um, the next one. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. That, that's the cup of redemption. And with the outstretched arm, to me, I see Jesus on the cross. He's got both of them, both arms stretched out. That's what I see, because that's our redemption. Him on that cross... Him dying for us, he's buying us. When he was dying for us, he was paying for us. He was given a great price for us. He loves us. He wants us. Okay, and then um, the fourth cup, and I will take you to me for a people. I will be to you a God, and you shall know that I am the Lord, your God. So, the, so there are those are the four cups. He's, he's, I will bring you out. I will take you. This now, don't forget that this is. Uh, it's always everything. Almost everything relates to Jesus being the one that loves us. He loves us. He wants to take us. He wants to take us. He wants to hold us. He wants to love us. He wants us to be a he, yeah. He loves us, and he wants to be one with us forever and forever, just like a man loves a woman and wants the woman to be with him all of his life. This is the same exact thing, and this is all created. He made the male and female, and he did all of this because this is how it is in him. So, the first cup, I will bring you out. The second cup, I will set you free. Doesn't he set us free? He, got, he first gives us the law, the burdens of the law, and then he sets us free from the law. And he sets us free from the law in a good way. Not that he wants to get rid of the law. But he wants us to do it without, without a heavy yoke. He doesn't want bondage. He wants to set us free. And we are set free and still yet bonded, but we're bonded in the love of God. Okay. 
I will redeem you. That's the third cup. Now, when he said, when he said, take, eat, take, drink, this is the cup of the New Testament. When he said that, that I believe that was the third, the time of the third cup. All right? And then he says, I will no longer um, drink of the fr fruit of the vine until I sit with you in the kingdom of heaven. And that's when we, he, that's the marriage supper of the lamb. That's when the lamb and the bride are, are feasting together in a marriage. And that's when he's going to be taking of the fruit of the vine. He's going to be in, uh, celebrating at a wedding. You, you, okay, so you, you notice that it says, I will take you, I will take you to me for a people. I will be to you a God and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. You shall know me. Okay, that's what he said and it's, it's uh, to me it's clear that he's going to be our husband. Okay, let's uh, let's uh, just take one more look at the the way it's written in Mark fourteen twenty three to twenty five. And he took the cup, and when he gave thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, "This is my blood of the new testament, which is shed." For many. So, he, in other words, he is redeeming us. Ver, verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day I drink it new in the kingdom of God, where he's taking us unto him, and he is going to be our husband. Okay, now the other thing that... Um, that he gave to Pergamon was a, a white stone. And um, and in that stone, a, na a new name written, which no man knows, saves he that receives it. Okay, so when I saw that white stone, I was wondering about that. And um, I, th I think it relates to the white stone that's used in the ur as the Urim. Urim means lights, lights plural. It's a plural word. It's lights, it's not light, it's lights. And Thuman, the Thuman means a perfection. Those are two stones. There's a white one and there's a black one. I believe that they are onyx stones in the sense that a name is engraved upon it. An onyx stone you can engrave. If you, if you have a white stone and you, you, you scratch it, you're going to see black. And so you can write, write something on it. Easy. And the same thing with the black stone. You, you write something, you, you scratch it, and you're going to see white. There are two colors. Onyx has two, two colors in it. It's, uh, it's, it's actually represented as, uh, the, as the, uh, tribe of Benjamin, who, who, uh, Benjamin was, Named Benjamin, son of my right hand, but his mother named him son of my sorrows. So you see, there is two, the two natures, and there's two natures, and every every all twelve bring out a a, a specific nature of Jesus, and the nature the nature that Benjamin brings two opposing natures in in Jesus. He is king, and he f washes feet. He's king, and he serves. Okay, and he he's humble, 
but he's king. He's king more than any king could ever be. All right, so, uh, and he's the first and the last. Now, I also noticed that the Urim begins with an Aleph, which is the first Hebrew letter, and the Thuman begins with a Tav, which is the last Hebrew letter. He's the first and the last. He is lights, and uh, more than one light. He's more than one light because he's, fa he's, he's got so many attributes to him, so many good, perfect acts, act, uh, attributes. He's perfect. Okay? And he, perfect is the Thuman. So he's the light of men. He's got many lights. And he's Thuman. He's perfection. And that's plural too. He's many perfections. And, and this... These two stones were upon the breastplate of the, which had the 12 stones, and the 12 stones had engraved in each stone the, a name of the tribe of Israel. And, and all, so all 12 of the natures of Jesus were represented in that breastplate. And on top of that, the Urim, the beginning, and the Tumen, the end. And all, everything on that breastplate is representing Jesus. The natures of, Je the many natures of Jesus. He's the first and he's the last. He's the Ur, he's the light, and he's the Tumen, the perfection, which when a man comes to the light, he gets perfection. He's the first and the last at the beginning and the end. And all 12 tribes point to him and say this, uh, you know, they point to him and say, uh, he's authority. He, he's, he's the law. He, he's a sacrifice. And there's 12. And that, that's, that's a, a topic people don't want. I don't know why they, they don't like it, but well, at least it, I can't say they don't like it. There's got to be a lot of people out there. But the problem with the, the zodiac uh, is that there's so much, there's so much um, error in that whole talk. It's it's just like the Bible, actually, in the sense that you can take the Bible and you can you can get get a make a cult. People make a cult out of the Bible. All right, so there's no way you can stop that. That's just how they are. But anyway, they are missing out. There's a there's a tremendous awesomeness. The gospel in the stars is really what it is. Now, this idea about being the morning star is shared by both Satan and Jesus. Before I start, I, I want to just Genesis 3 verse 15 and I will put enmity, that's a war, that's war, that's fighting, that's bitterness between two people, two persons, between thee, and he's talking to the serpent, and the woman, he's talking to, he's talking about Eve there, and between thy seed the serpent seed, and her seed. So there's going to be a, a war between the two seeds. And in particular here, in this enmity, one of them, the, the seed of the serpent, is going to be the Antichrist. Judas Iscariot. Uh was also that seed and and the woman's seed of course is Jesus it's it's not seeds it's not plural that word seed isn't plural is one it's talking about one seed at that comes from a woman 
Well, this is the you know Antichrist comes out of the the serpent seed, not not a woman seed. We're not really talking about a woman seed with that. But but both both Judas and the Antichrist, who I think is Prince Charles, and I say that other other places you have to go look if you want. The serpent seed and the, the woman seed is a battle. And it has been since Genesis since the since man sinned up until the very end when Jesus comes back. So from the beginning until the end there's this there's a battle, there's enmity is between the between the darkness and the light. And there's a fight. And and uh, it happens to all men that come from the seed of women. It happens to all of us. We all have that fight. But in particular, in particular, there are two seeds and one comes from the woman and I believe that's Mary that woman is Mary and one comes from the serpent, and that serpent is the dragon, and uh, and uh, he he gives us his seat to um, Antichrist the man, the man, and the Antichrist the man has many followers that are also Antichrist, and they. All, all of his followers are coming from the serpent seed. And it shall bruise thy head. So he steps on his head. And thou shall bruise his heel. The serpent seed will bruise his heel. Because he stepped on his head. It hurts his head. It hurts his heel. But it also reflects that, you know... The heel, when he was on the cross, was severely bruised. There was a spike on it. It was it was holding. It was he had a spike through it, and you know, it, 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 his his heel was bruised on that day. Okay, now how does it describe uh, Lucifer in Isaiah? How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Light bearer, which means light bearer. Translates to light bearer. Son of the morning. See, there's the son of the morning. This is why I'm saying this, that they both want that title. They both, one, one is deserving of it, which is Jesus, and he calls himself the, the, the bright and morning star. He calls himself that. Meantime, Lucifer calls himself that too. And God is giving him, and this is now God talking to him. He says, how, the, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, like, which means like bearer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? Yeah. He's, he's doing a number on the nations. He's really warring against us and weakening, weakening us. Yes, that's what he's doing right now. It's happening right now. He's about to appear and rear his ugly head. Now let's just take a look here at, as his, at his name, um, Light Bearer. Okay, in, in Hebrew... That when we say hallelujah, when we say hallelujah, we, we say praise the Lord. We give, give him brightness, make his, make his name bright. It has, hallow has the, the connotation of being bright, shining, glorious, praise, praiseworthy. All of that is in the word hallow. Hallelujah. Yah is short for Yehovah. 
Praise ye the Lord. Okay, so it's a. Uh, it it it's translates to be shining one. Right, Lucifer. I I think is Latin. Lu I know Luci means light, and so fur is probably bearer or bringer. Okay, so I don't know. I'm just guessing. I'm not even looking it up. So he says, how art thou fallen, shining one, son of the dawn, son of the morning, star of the morning. Okay, now let's just take a glimpse. Uh, the, the idea of fallen from heaven. And, and we know that Satan is, is an angel. He's a fallen angel. A fallen angel. Okay, let's, 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 first let's look at... Job 38, 6 and 7. Whereupon are the foundations, and now he's talking about foundations of the earth. Okay? Where are the foundations of the earth? How are they, how are they fastened? Where, where, what, fa what, <clears throat> what holds up the earth? If you look at a picture of the earth from the, in space, it's uh it hangs on nothing. It hangs on nothing. And he so so how does how does it happen? And this, he's bringing out this mystery that this big heavy heavy earth is sitting there. And and believe me, it is not spinning. It's not falling. It is in the, it is almost in the exact center of the of the universe. It is the earth. It is where he has put his life. He put, he created man and he put him on the earth. It doesn't spin the, the sun orbits us every day. It orbits us. This, I don't know why, you know, they call themselves scientists, but they have never proved Never ever prove that the earth spins. So don't, don't call yourself a scientist because a scientist has to have a, has a theory and then his theory is that the earth spins. Okay? But they never prove it. So you can't call yourself a scientist because a scientist has a theory and he proves his theory. <clears throat> but that's another topic. I always get into other topics. That's how it is. So, who laid the cornerstone of the earth? When the, the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Okay, so now this is, this is right from the very beginning. Again, we're going back to the beginning. When the earth is being formed, morning stars sang together. See? So... What God calls, God has called Satan, I mean, Lucifer, or he's called Satan a, a morning star, son of the morning. And just like Jesus calls himself the morning star. Okay, so the angels are there and also the sons of God shouts for joy. We are there too. Uh, this is this is that whole idea of predestination. We we were thought about when God was creating the earth. He was thinking about all of us. And as the sons of God, not the sons of men here. This is sons of God. We are born again sons of God. And as all the born again sons of God were all there shouting for joy. And, uh, you know, it must have been, you know, we don't remember that. None of us remember that. It's like you don't remember, um, the, the, the mute, the beautiful music when you were in, the, in your mother's womb. You don't remember what it was. But I, I believe we were there. And we, we are called the sons of God here. 
and the angels are called morning stars. The angels praise God too. They praise Jesus in Revelation. They praise him. They say he's worthy. They look up to him. <clears throat> now, there's a couple of verses that kind of hint that we were there before the foundation of the world. John seventeen twenty four. Father, I will that they also, meaning us, disciples, meaning his disciples, who are us, at this, in today's day, we, believers, are his disciples. We should be, at least. If you're not his disciple, you, you're not, you, you don't know the guy. Um, anyway, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am. So he wants, right there, he's, he's taking us out. He's taking us to himself. He's, he's uh, asking us, he's not asking us, he's taking us to himself. And we were given by our Father. Our Father has given us to him so that they may be where I am. So he wants his bride right next to him, right near him, and they may behold my glory. He, want, they, he wants good things for all of us. He's got a lot of glory, and he wants to share it with us. Which thou hast given me, for that thou loves me before the foundation of the world. So right there, before the foundation of the world, he has, he, he has uh, given him us. He's given us to him before the foundation of the world. So we were there. We were the sons of God. We were there, sons of God, shouting for joy. I mean, that's what I'm saying there. Um, Ephesians 1, 4. According, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Right there, before the foundation of the world, he's got us in mind to give to Jesus to be holy without blame before him in love. Okay, it, it's those so I, I'm explaining it there, okay? Explain what I mean. And he says, uh, another, getting back to the morning star, this is when Jesus says, when Jesus claims that he's the morning star. Revelations 22, 16 and 17. I, Jesus, have sent mine angels to testify unto you these things in the churches. He's talking about the, the messages to the seven churches. I am the root and offspring of David. So you notice there, he's the root of David, which means that he was... David sprang from him, and he's the offspring of David, which means he sprang from David, <laughs> which is really the way it happened. I mean, he uh, created David. He was he he was he was um, you could say father of David, and you could say you could say he's an offspring as the son of man. He's the offspring of David. And he is the bright and morning star. There he is. He's saying, I am the bright and morning star. I'm the one that after the night is over, I come, I spring up. I'm the day spring. I uh, come around the mountain. He'll be coming around the mountain when he comes. And they, they say that that, that song is uh, 
a Jewish origin celebrating the Sabbath. Because the Sabbath begins, actually the Sabbath begins at night, but the, the Sabbath is enjoyed in the daytime. It begins at night, but it's enjoyed in the daytime. And when, when, the, when the sun comes up around the morning, around the mountain, that, that, that Sabbath morning, he'll be coming around that mountain. He'll be driving six white horses, six white horses, six white horses. He had six days of work. Because when I see the bright and morning star, I see the sun coming up in the beginning, in the very early morning. I see the beauty and the brightness of the morning, of the sunrise. And the spirit and the bride say, come. See the bride, that's us. We're telling everybody, come, come to the supper, come join us, come meet him, and let him that hears say, come. Him that hears, listen if you have ears. Those are those people, and they say, come. Let him that is a thirst, come. Whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. I'm going to uh, end it right there, people. I, um, I hope you share the my little bright thought of when he says, I will give you the morning star. And I was wondering, how could there be morning star in... Uh, when there is no night, there's no night in the millennium. There's no sun, there's no light. It's just we get our light from him. Take care. I love you guys. God loves you.